great Yarmouth recently, walking the promenade, and there was a terrible accident. We didn't see it. It had already happened. We saw the after effects. We got there and we could see the victim and the blood. We could see the police and the ambulance were there. So what did we do? We didn't stop and stare at the victim. We didn't walk up to the paramedics and go, hey, need a hand. We didn't go up to the cops and say, hey, tell us all the gory details. Who was to blame here? No, we walked on by. And as we walked on by, we prayed for the people involved. Now consider the news, whether it's on the TV or the radio or the interweb. Something horrific happens, terrorist incident, God forbid, there's blood everywhere. What do we need to know? What happened? Was anyone hurt? The basics, right? But how much information will the newsrooms provide us with? Lots! They're going to run for days with a story like this. It's no secret our news loves to wallow in misery and disasters and atrocities. They can keep going for a week, dredging up new nuggets of information. But how exactly does it help me to learn exactly how all the victims reacted? How's it helping me to know what the killer's last words were, what his last meal was? How much do you need to know? Yes, of course we need to be informed. But the question is, how much do we need to know? Could there be too much information? I think there is. As Christians, we care about the victims and we want to make sure we respond right. We want to be able to pray intelligently for the families involved. And that means we must know some information. But at some point, we need to say, that's enough. Because at some point, we're just rubbernecking. Today, I want to turn the spotlight on the news. I want us to see how the news works so we can watch the news and engage with it more intelligently. The first thing you need to know about the news is if you're relying on the news alone to give you an accurate picture of the world, you could be deluding yourself. Just imagine if the world was a chessboard where all the white and black squares represent the good and bad things happening in the world. Which colour square would the news focus on? All the black squares, never the white squares. That's what the news does. The news focuses on the bad stuff bad news sells. All the good stuff happening, you don't see that because the news won't tell you about it. So if you're relying on the news to inform you accurately about the world, you've got a problem straight away because it's filtering out half the information from the word go. But you know, it's actually worse than that. My analogy isn't right. The, the chessboard suggests that there's an equal amount of black bad stuff black squares, good stuff, white squares, happening in the world. But that's not true. There's a lot more good stuff happening in the world than bad stuff. Fact. I've mentioned the book Factfulness by Hans Rosling before, and this is a wonderful antidote to the news. He gives loads of good news statistics. Less people die of starvation today. Brilliant. Longevity is increasing. In terms of quality of life in this country, how much better is it, is it, is it living today than it was back in 1820? Even in 1920? You wouldn't think it if you believe the news. And what about crime in the UK? Are we a violent nation? We must be, mustn't we? Did you know as of 2019, the United Kingdom ranked something like 174th, something like that, in terms of Homicide figures. But if you watch the news, it seems like it's never been worse. Now, don't get me wrong. Every homicide is awful. We mustn't ignore them. But we mustn't forget the big picture too and start being afraid to go out the front door because we might be killed in a drive-by shooting. Paul told the Philippians, whatever is true, think on these things. Last week, as we drove home from Great Yarmouth, we got caught in a traffic jam. There'd been a traffic accident and 
We were, we were ages from the crash, but the traffic, traffic slowed to a standstill as cars passed the accident slowly, rubbernecking. Don't you hate that? And yet, rubbernecking is sinful human nature, written large. We're drawn to having a look at the worst crimes or accidents. We spend more time thinking about the bad things in our lives than the good stuff. Weird, isn't it? You never fret about the good stuff, do you? But you do think about the bad stuff. And the news panders to that. One TV journalistic rule of thumb is, if it bleeds, it leads. It's a bit cynical. TV journalists recognise people don't go looking to the news to tell them happy things. Journalists recognise we, the audience, are drawn to gory things. So the TV news will focus on a five-car pile-up on the M1 where there's been a lot of carnage. Because that's a story. We want to have a look at the carnage. Now on the radio, they won't deal with that story of the car crash. Why? Because they don't do pictures. Ideas work better on the radio. Talking heads. But now ask yourself, what's the great significance of that car crash story? There are car crashes all the time. I've contributed a few in my time too. In the context of the world, is that story of the five-car smash-up significant enough to Trump? I know the story of war in Pakistan or genocide in Burma, or whatever. No, but it's got a gory picture, and it happened in England, so from a TV point of view, it's news. But what if there's no picture to go with it? Well, that's easy. It's not news. Sadly, China has been doing terrible things to the Ouija's for ages. Why hasn't that been reported until now? Well, that's easy because they've just got some film and pictures out of there. If you've got pictures, it's news. One journalist said, we don't do issues, we do stories. And the point that we're making is, you can't get the high ratings figures by giving people straight facts. We, the audience, will fall asleep. Statistics, boring. The pound dropped again, well, boring. Experts, boring, blah, blah. So to keep us awake, they wrap up the facts in a story. So let's say you're the BBC and you want to focus on the, the latest unemployment figures. You don't say, hey, here's the latest figures from the Office of National Statistics. No, you go to Sunderland and you read a family who've just lost their job. And you see the children and their mom crying. What will happen at Christmas? And the story makes the figures come alive. And we, the audience, we're invested in this story. How will the government help this poor family? It makes us in emotionally involved. It's manipulative. Now, you might think that's good manipulation. It's the right cause. And fine, I couldn't disagree. But it is manipulation. When you watch the news next and you see them focus on, I don't know, some granny or, or somebody in hospital or whatever, Ask yourself, what are they trying to get me to believe? Is this story a good and fair summary of the facts? Or are they manipulating me? There's one more feature of the news you need to be aware of. The news doesn't do God. The news never mentioned God. The only time he gets a mention is when there's paedophiles in the Roman Catholic Church. And this is bad news for us. Because if we focus too much on the news, we can get anxious. We can forget God is in control. The media don't do God. You'll never hear George Allegaia or Jon Snow say right at the end of the programme. Finally, please remember, as terrible as some of this stuff was, please remember, God is still in control of the universe. None of this stuff has taken him by surprise. He's got this. Don't worry. Good night. He'll never say that. But as Christians, we know that's what they should say. The news media may not do God, but God is very much involved in the news, whether it's reported or not. As a sinful human being, I'm drawn to the gory, bad news side of life. But here's the thing. What I find is the more time I spend focusing on the grimmest stories, looking for all the, the, the vilest details, eventually it becomes too much. 
and I need to switch it off. This stuff drags me down. Dwelling on bad news affects us. And it's not just me who thinks that. One journalist, Rolf Debelli, argues that too much news leads to fear and aggression. It hinders your creativity and your ability to think deeply. Personally, if I ever feel depressed, sometimes I have a fast from the news. Yep, you heard right. In those times, I don't watch any news or listen to any news. And weirdly, what I found is you don't die if you don't listen to the news. Dwelling on bad news affects us. Other times, my solution is less dramatic. I limit myself to a certain amount of time per day to check the news, to scan the headlines. And I ask, is this story, is it, is it this big story, is it of real significance? Or is this a media story? Some politician has made a gaffe. So what? It's tittle-tattle. Friends, whatever is true, whatever is just, whatever is noble, think on these things. As we finish, let's pray for journalists and our media. They've got an important God-given task to report accurately and fairly. Almighty God, strengthen and direct, we pray, the will of all those whose work it is to write what many read and to speak where many listen. May they be bold to confront evil and injustice. May they be understanding and, and compassionate of human weakness. May they reject the half-truth which deceives and the slanted word which corrupts. We pray for Christian journalists, and may the power which they have, for good or ill, always be used with honesty and courage, with respect and integrity, so that when all here has been written, said and done, they may, unashamed, meet you face to face, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.